Hi, Assalamualaikum to Madam Shazim. My name is Eva. Today I will be presenting on my legal research topic, which is the critical analysis on anti happiness. So the first one is I will be explaining about the abstract. So firstly, this this research is focusing on the effectiveness on the anti hopping law. That has been a debate after its implementation in 2022. So this research is to understand the, the necessity of this law and whether it is really effective in maintaining the political stability in Malaysia. Next is the introduction. So, as we all know, for the first time in history, in Malaysia political history, the change of government took place without a formal election. So, basically, in 2020, in 2020 until 2022, there are three prime ministers that has that there has been three changes of prime minister throughout 2020 to 2022. So the sudden turn of the political parties and some minister of parliament enabled them to form a new government and become rulers, despite the implementation of the anti hockey law in 2022. We wanted to know whether it is really effective because there are few arguments stated on the loopholes of the law itself. And there will be another Sheraton move in the future. Next is the problem statement. So, since 2018, the militia has witnessed four changes in political leadership. So, during this time, the country experienced a period of political tension, tension and uncertainty, uncertainty. So, the elected representative can change. Uh, their party whenever they want. So basically, even there is either, even there is the even there is the implementation of the anti hoping law. Is it really ensure that the that they can maintain the political stability? So this paper is to evaluate on the effectiveness of the law itself and. How, how, how are the challenges that arise from the enforcement of the law and how it impairs the law ability to achieve its objective? Next is the research objective and research question. So for my objective, it is to invest, investigate the relevancy of the anti hoping law and to examine the effectiveness of the anti hoping law itself. In maintaining the political stability. And as for my research question is what is the importance of the anti hoping law in Malaysia and how effective uh, has it been in maintaining the political stability in Malaysia. So next I will be talking about the scope of research. So basically it has been on the how well the law complies with Article 10 of the Federal Constitution which is the freedom of association, and it is to provide a well understanding on the effectiveness of the anti hoping law in Malaysia. As we all know, the problem with the current situation is that it has made the election result in Malaysia unpredictable. So based on this finding, we will um, suggest, I will suggest, and there will be recommendation to improve or to amend the law itself. Next is the significance of the research is to get a clear understanding on how the law influenced the political representative behavior behaviors to maintain trust in the election process. We want to, we want to know the discipline of the party. And second is to balance their individual rights, how they balance their individual rights and also to provide an insight on the legal challenges of the anti hoping law related to the constitutional right, especially pertaining to Article 10, and then to investigate the law impact on the political landscape and conduct an interview with a professional and politician opinion regarding the law effectiveness and impact. So for the methodology, is my method is more to the qualitative, which is 
um, we focus more on the people experiences and our preservation on the professional interaction. So I conduct the interview with professional like political science expert and also politician. So for the literature review is there are a few articles that I read and this is the three of it. One of it is political stability and anti open law, comparative perspective and reflection. So basically the article has mean on the role of the anti open law in Malaysia and how improve the political stability between um, election and reduce political fragmentation. And then the next one is anti open law ministry of nation for political and election chaos. So the study has made on the effect of the Malaysia anti open law on the country political system. Next is anti defection law annihilation of the similar constitution ethics. So the purpose of this research is to look delve into the anti defection and its implementation on the democracy and constitutional ethics. Next is the limitation. So basically, uh, in, in completing this research, there are few limitations that I get that I managed to get to. First, it is it was hard for me to change um uh, and very challenging for me to balance my study during the first uh, during Hari and so Ramadan because I have two obligations that I need to um, achieve that I need to do so it's, uh, it's a little distraction for me. Second is I was all preoccupied with the family dinners, uh family gatherings and events. So uh, it caused me a little bit delay in completing my research. And the third one is that there is a, what I feel is that there is a lot of past, past study, so it's difficult for me to conceptualize my studies. Next is chapter two. So basically chapter two, I'll be explaining on the positions, the loopholes, the need of the law, and also freedom of association at the time. So in position of anti open law, I explain on the Article 49A and Section 7A of the Federal Constitution, and also impose changes to Section 3 to Article 10. So basically, um, in anti open law also, they impose changes to Section 3A to Article 10. Which is that they give the station on the political representative movement, which this has also been a debate regarding its contrast to the freedom of association and political time. Second, I will be explaining on the law of the law. Forty nine clause A of the federal constitution contrasts with Article forty nine clause two which outlined three objections when which a member when a member parliament does not lose their seat. So basically 49 was A stated regarding um the 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 elected representative they lost their seat if they weren't really jump if they jumped in from another party to another party. So their, their seats will be working. However, in Article 49, clause 2, it stated that there are three exceptions where, they do, where the MP does not lose their seat. And one of it is the if they are being expelled from their parties, which means this is a loophole because if the elected representative wanted to jump party, they can go against their party. Um, they can go against their party belief, and with this, the part the, their parties can um disqualify them from the party. So this is a loophole. And the second one is there is no clear definition on the anti law because in the article it's provided on the uh, it's only it's didn't mention whether the anti-hopping law include the coalition. 
This is only regarding the member, the individual members of the parliament. It didn't mention about the coalition. Meaning to say, there will be another charity move that can possibly happen. And the third one is there is no like clear time frame for the process of the the of the process of disqualification of the member of parliament. Meaning to say that um they will cause delay. They will cause delay in the process of the disqualification of the members of the parliament. It will take years to solve the problem. For example, in the case of Ba'a Basatu Sabah, the four members of parliament who left the party in 2022, until now, the case is still ongoing in the court. So there is there is no clear time. Next is one of the loophole under Article 49 plus 3 is it grants the speaker the authority to address the speaker role. So which this means that um it would give absolute power to the speaker to decide whether there is whether there is a candidacy or not. So this is also one of the loopholes. Next is the need of the entrepreneur in Malaysia. So as we all know, one of the main reasons is because of the Lanka Sharaton that happened in 2020, which leads to the downfall of the Pakatan Harapan. So another one is to address narrow majorities. Because in order to form a government, we need a full majority, 222 seats. And then, um, so having a stable majority ensure the proposed bill can be approved without a delay. So for example, like in the 2022 general election, there is uh, not enough members to form the government. So the Barisan National had to form government with Pakata and Harapan. So in order to stop this narrow major narrow majorities, so we need to implement the anti-hopping laws. Next is freedom of association article 10. So one of the debates is introduction of the anti-hopping law leads to um clash between personal liberty and over sovereignty. However, principal democracy is about the representation of the people. So this restriction. Uh, in Article uh, 10 of the Freedom Association, where they, they restrict the MPs from freedom of association from jumping from another party to another party, is to serve a greater good, which is to maintain the political stability and respect in the water mandate. So there, is, there must be a balance between democracy and also the individual rights. Next, in chapter four, uh, I will be explaining on the anti-hopping law in Singapore and also in India. So basically, in Singapore, the poly, uh, the anti-defection is called as political party act. So Singapore also is one of the country that has stable political system in Asia. So th there is the wording is quite similar with Malaysia constitution, which provided. Uh, that the seat of the member of the parliament will be welcome if they choose to be a member or explain or resign. So there are a few um, similarities between Singapore and Malaysia. I think that Malaysia need to learn from Singapore as Singapore has a more stable political party and they also has been implemented um. They have also implemented um, anti-defection for 59 years. So they are more experienced in terms of political power, in terms of the anti-hopping law. Next is India. So India has been in, uh, the anti-defection law has been in operation since 19, 1959, so in 1985. So it's quite long, however, even in India, there, there are a few amendments that they made since their implementation. I think it's, it's been three to four amendments of law because the law failed 
to maintain the political stability not only that they have few they have few of the um loopholes which lead to the ineffectiveness law itself. So in terms of the provision with measure competent here, yeah, most of the provision are almost the same as we all know. Malaysia, Malaysia always follow India law, like criminal law. So both in India and Malaysia, there is no particular provision stated on the time frame. So this is also a loophole because it will cause delays in the process. And in India also, they give the power of the speaker to decide whether the seat is vacant or not. Mm -hmm. This is also a loophole, same in Malaysia. I think that Malaysia need to learn from Singapore and India for their mistake and improve the law itself. Okay, for the planning and analysis, these are the questions that I asked them to you. First is what prompt to the introduction of the entrepreneur? How do you think the entrepreneur is aligned with the principle of democracy and free right to freedom of association? Third, can you discuss the benefit and drawbacks of the entrepreneur in Malaysia? And considering the entrepreneur is not being funded in Malaysia, how do we assess its, its, its effectiveness and importance? So, four respondents have agreed to be interviewed regarding the topic. So, through the online interview, the data has been selected. However, I only choose three of it from the four that I interviewed. So, I agree with all the participants. Like, as we can see now, the stability compared to previously, where every member of the movement can put from another party that they wanted. So, I agree that with participant too regarding the drawbacks about the loophole of the law that need to be addressed and improved in the future. So recommendation is close the loopholes in the anti hoping world, which this may include by a man, a few a man the article include the need for a clearer definition of defection, not only for the member of the parliament, the individual, but also the coalition. Because the main reason why we need this anti hoping law is due to charity move, which is this involves the coalition. So there must be a clear definition. Second, the power of the speaker in deciding the discussion. As we all know, this will give absolute power to, to the speaker itself. And third one, specific time frame for the disqualification process. Okay, so there will be continuous efforts that is very essential to identify and address any of the loophole that may be taken advantage. So, conclusion is, it is crucial to acknowledge that the law does not guarantee its effectiveness, but it is a good step in Malaysia. So, continuous, continuous efforts are essential to identify any to address this loophole that may be taken advantage by the politician for their poly, for their personal gain. So the anti hoping law should not be seen as the static measure measure, but a dynamic component of democracy that requires ongoing improvement and adaptation alongside the mission progress and maturity. That's all for me, thank you.